Behind the Counter is sponsored by Hover.com. Domain names made simple. Go to gfq.hover.com and get 10% off your entire purchase. And by Stitcher Radio. Listen on the go via the Stitcher mobile app. For more information, go to stitcher.com slash gfq. Hello and welcome everyone to another star-studded episode of Behind the Counter. I'm your host, Rich Dan Bowling, and with me as always is the man who never smiles but only laughs, Jonathan Adler. How do? I can't hear you. How do? Perfect, there you go. You were talking into the butt end of the microphone. The butt end. So what's going on, man? Oh, you know, trying to live. How you doing? I'm doing all right, man. Just not enjoying this heat. Ooh, the heat. The heat's starting, man. When the heat starts, I get a little panicky. I start getting a little frazz. I turn into Woody Allen. Ugh. I'm every Woody Allen character. Ugh, I'm the same way around women. Well, you know, it's just so hot outside. It's, it's, it's just so hot warm. outside. How do, you, how do you live in the warm weather all the time? You need a variety. Can't do it. Also, coming from a dude who's wearing a black work shirt, black shorts, black everything. Black, black, black dog. dog. I'm telling you, man. The Dumb way dog. to go. Like I know you have no problem wearing uh, shorts, but uh, slacks. Can't do the slacks. I can't, I'm surprised you're, you're doing slacks. Why? It's hot, man. This is so comfortable. You never show your legs off either. No, I don't. I'm not a shorts person. Why not? Uh, I'm just not a shorts, but I think it looks stupid. I think hey, Jess. I think you look like, like a grown child. That's you, fine. You man. can pull it off. I'm cool with being, um, looking like a vato. I <laughs> like the. Uh, I don't even think of vato with mm-hmm. shorts. I, I like the um, the fact that I have good pants on, uh-huh. and they're so thin and very airy. That it's like sense. the same fabric as your underwear. Are those cotton? Yeah. Those are nice. And these are elastic, too. Those are nice. Vicky always, uh, my girlfriend always calls me out on, um, there's that scene in... Um, my grandfather never wore jeans. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I think I followed up with him. Um, the right you idea. mean shorts? No, he never wore jeans, period. Okay. Hey, you don't wear jeans either. I, I very rarely wear yeah. jeans. Um, in, uh, there's a line in uh, the Seth Rogen Paul Rudd movie, uh, She Knocked Up, she knocked where up. he shows up in like, shorts and a polo, and Paul Rudd's like, you look like a cholo on Easter. And like Vicky's always like, that's you. I'm like, whatever, man. You if, are a children. If I could wear shorts every day, I would. Ugh. I, listen, I fall into the I fall into the category. It's all right. I know. It's all right. I wear basketball shorts too. I wear basketball shorts and a loose white t shirt. Well, you know, <laughs> like, I told you about the thing with Brian, mm-hmm. right? Oh yeah, I was like basketball shorts underneath his pants all the time. And no matter what, just in case he got a ball, bro. I don't believe that. I think I so. I think it's uh, because he's so thin, he's wearing as many clothing as possible. Because he's the type of dude like it'll be hot out mm-hmm. or springtime. And he'll wear uh, a wife beater, Parker. <laughs> wife beater, a t-shirt, then t-shirt. Yeah. Like, you know, the three layers. Yeah. So I think he's just trying to just bulk up. That's the thing that we also have in common is that I'm not a t-shirt guy. I can't wear shirts under my shirts. The only time I do is uh, for like a wedding or something like that. Exactly. I'm wearing a shirt because I know I'm going to sweat. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm just, at, at, for the longest time, I was like, that sounds so stupid. You know, if I'm going to wear another shirt, it makes me hotter. But it really does make a difference. It does. It absorbs the funk underneath so the funk yeah, don't come out. You yeah. Know? I was at I was at the most roastingest uh, wedding last weekend. God bless you. I couldn't believe you did that. And it was they, almost the entire, every time you want to go outside for a smoke or something, you had to uh, go out to like a porch, which was mm. like deep in the sun. And of course, the wedding itself was outdoors. It started at mm. 1230. Talk to hours, two and a half hours. So, right, so you're under the sun. You're right in the sun. Right. So like the next, like I came home, I'm like, oh man, how red I am. But uh, I saw the pictures, man. I can't believe you you rocked the vest on top of everything too, man. I wore a vest. You wore a vest. Yeah. I think you wore a vest. No, I don't wear a vest. Maybe it was an old picture. Could have been. But uh, could have been me at the trip. Club. It looked hot, man. It was. It really was hot, hot, dude. Everyone got roasted. I can't do that. I have a wedding to go to on uh, July 1st, and I feel like I want to get a white tuxedo with the sleeves cut off and just like, try to be as cool as possible. Look like Tony Atlas or something. <laughs> <laughs> go with it. Just sleeveless. Go with it. Like a sleeveless maniac walking I'm gonna around. Start, I, I'm start going to start wearing the... Um, I'm going with some white denim and some mm-hmm. uh, uh, cut-off uh, jean vest. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Go jorts. I want to go jean. I want to go like real dangerous. Go uh, <laughs> uh, blue denim, black shirt, no sleeves. 
Or what a freaking Canadian tux- tuxedo. You'd, be, yeah, you'd, you'd look insane. I want to see you in uh, in jean shorts one day. Not by your pool. I want to see you in jeans because that's the only time you wear shorts. I want to see you I've, in... I'll, once in a while, I'll go in shorts, but more than likely, I'll, I actually have like vacation shorts I go with. Mm. Like if I'm going to somewhere tropical, I'll wear uh, these really awful, which I'm very against, uh, camouflage, uh, like... Um, the one with the pockets on the side, the cargo shorts. What's wrong with that? I hate those, man. Nah, you're ridiculous. No, I not, love those. I, we have very different opinions on fashion. We do. We do. I listen. I'm not a fashion. I'm I'm utilitarian when it comes to fashion. I'm I think like, you've come a long way, though. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Think I so. I think that uh, I think when I first met you, it was basically like baggy jeans uh, and black me- metal shirts. Black. Yeah. So like I've mm. seen you grow colors and. Mm. You know, do you think like you've come come a long way? I do. Uh, I do. Yeah. I'm sure a lady helps too with her opinion. Not really. No. Her her a fashion opinion on me does not matter whatsoever. Because she'll pick out some like really ugly stuff. Sorry, baby, if you're listening. And I'd be like, I'm not wearing that. You know. But that's just me. I don't. I have. I have zero fashion sense. I'm like, yeah. if it if it looks cool and it's comfortable, that's fine. Well, you know? Bobby Bobby sent an email out to uh, to me. Uh, Ralph and his wife uh, about some Puma sneakers he saw. He's like, oh, yeah. like, these look pretty fresh. And uh, they, uh, they're they Cheech the Wizard. You know, Cheech the Wizard from the old, like, independent, like, 1960s comic. It was basically just like a wizard hat okay. and, like, feet coming out of oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was like, like a dirty book. Um, he, you know, it's like, it's like Cheech the Wizard uh, Pumas, and they were ugly as sin yeah and it took for it took everybody like it, we like no response to it was like an intervention he's like he's like <laughs> i think they're kind of gay they might be only for women anyway uh-huh. and then uh the last like carrie's like i'm sorry babe it looks terrible they look really gay and then each one of us like they're horrible what are you doing i hope somebody at least said like dude i know you wear cowboy boots all day every day this is not a step in any direction not only does he wear <laughs> cowboy boots but he also uh wraps his his feet with socks Mm -hmm. so like uh like he'll wear his socks and then he has two bound socks yeah uh around his ankle you got to keep the boot on yeah because it's like it's it's not a proper fit and it's also giving you a little bit more you know it's like putting uh i guess lifts in there for the the most part and also just like giving some extra comfort but bobby if if bobby uh my mic cut out really yeah yeah Am I, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I have to cut out my head. Uh, Bobby, if you're listening, don't go sock on sock. Go. What are you doing? Do you have audio? No. You don't? No. Really? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, you're All fine. Right. Uh, Bobby, if you're listening, don't go sock on sock. Do um, handkerchiefs on the ankles. He does that. A lot better. Yeah. That's what he does. That's what he does. I think he started out with socks, and you mm-hmm. know, he was like, do rags on his feet. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you got to do, man. Uh, all right. So uh, enough of the, the <laughs> beginning banter. About uh, clothing, the latest fashion We're trends. Slowly becoming a fashion uh, site. Uh, we got some uh, comic books for you. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, we got some comic book talks for you later, but we have more comic book talk for you now. <laughs> Today's theme: we are going to talk about, uh, in general, fandom subgenres. Uh, what, how far it's come, where it's going, uh, the new thing that's kind of sprouting up. Um, and this is also because we've we've lived through the transition from non-internet to internet, and yeah. I think that has a giant it has a lot to do with everything. Uh, no. no, especially with uh, old school dudes and uh, the way they relate to new stuff and new people who only relate to li- relate to most things digitally or something that they can watch ethereally online. Um, well, to kind of to kind of uh, not at all. To you you're messing me up. You just whatever you did is just awful. Nothing. nothing good i don't have anything uh, nope um hopefully everybody can hear us and i don't have to repeat that speech that i just there forgot. we go <laughs> all right perfect. all right so uh yeah. it's funny uh i was wa- i told you that i was watching the george lucas versus the people yes which is actually a really good documentary just to see like the insanity and like this like how masochistic the uh star wars fans are also also can i interject really sure, quick sure. um for those of you that don't know we do love comic books i'm a huge star wars fan i love star wars to death john is the take it or leave it star wars fan who does not uh-huh. seek it out like you do you never seek it out like you never talk about it i know you love not it not anymore though but know? i was so big in that. i mean yeah. that, that was my bread and butter when i was a mm-hmm. kid i mean it was like comic books and star wars like you know, I had like all the figures. You know, like I was obsessed with Star Wars. Right. I was like, 
you know, just as excited as anybody else for it. But um, my point, which I kind of derailed from, uh, was the whole idea of Neil Gaiman speaks on it. And he had a good point where, because we're going to eventually start talking about the idea of, like, when is it time for you to depart your ways with comic books? Right, you know, right? Is that what we're gonna talk about too. Right? Yeah. Also, like that's the tail end of kind of like yeah. when, like for certain fans, right? When is enough enough? And and know? and nowadays we have such a mm-hmm. big rise in uh in fan fiction, mm-hmm. and you know everyone has their idea. Like you know, I'm a Game of Thrones fan. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an idea in my head for certain people what they look like, what the way they personally tra- the right. way they talk, personality traits, whatever it may be. And you know, you most of, you know ninety percent of the time, you're probably gonna get disappointed in some way you perform with uh neil gaiman spoke on this documentary and he said um basically when it comes to writing and any type of fiction uh people want the last good thing you wanted and they want more of that oh yeah the last book you read you like that i want mm-hmm. more of that stuff that uh, yeah you know what like that's that's a huge thing with i feel like fandom in general also especially like especially with comic books with comic books also and it's like I'm not saying that we are the like uh, there's 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 fans and then there's super fans and then there's like freaks and stuff like for example like like you brought up a very good point because you know like I I love heavy metal music um no Ma- uh, Metallica put out Master of Puppets you will never get Master of Puppets from Metallica ever again even though that's the album that everybody wants again and again and again every album they want to sound like Master of Puppets it's not going to happen creators move on you know you can't dig yourself into a ditch writing the same story over and over and over again. And yes, there are creators that do that, and that's their bread and butter. For example, Stan Lee. Stan Lee writes a comic in 1960s. Great. Awesome. Revolutionary. Writes it the same style now. For for guys like us, not that great. Not that great at all. Um, but for older cats that we have met like while we work together... Um, at, at at a comic book store, like that was that was it. You know, remember when they had those like the Stanley interpretational, like what they would do now, what he would do now yes. with these characters, yeah, yeah, yeah. and like these old school dudes like ate it up, man. They ate it up, and it's just like really hokey hack, like hack of himself storytelling. You know? Yeah, it is. It is, and and it dates them, and it doesn't. It mm-hmm. it it kind of decays their work. Yeah. That you know, like John Byrne is like a perfect example of. That. Oh yeah. You know, like this is a guy who really burned every single need for me to ever read a John Byrne book. And he burned a lot of bridges too within the industry. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. Well he was like one of the first outspoken uh guys out there who opened his friggin' mouth mm-hmm. on the internet and started to uh really uh make some enemies. Well he used he used the fo- that that's the thing. Like when the internet first started, like he used the forum to kind of like really express it before Twitter, before anything, before like real forums, he went out there and just like expressed his woes to like everything. Cause he knew it was a new medium, you know? And there is, there is that logic of like being a future minded with stuff like that. Um, but in but terms still, of, there's a, level, there's, a, there's a limit to it. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. Like, I feel Cause like, no, it is burn burns. Like he was, like, I loved his X-Men work. Like mm-hmm. I loved his, like, you know, his art was amazing. Right. Was so great. And Fantastic was, four. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. he, like he was there for such mm-hmm. great period of time and now it's just a dick. And the guy did really shitty work when he returned, when he was yeah. still talking shit. Mm-hmm. Like, Remember that? Uh, remember he came on JLA for a while, mm-hmm. and he did Crucifer. Right. Ah, uh, terrible. And like, and that was like the JLA book. Yeah, was about a vampire named Crucifer, mm-hmm. and the art was terrible. the The narrative was terrible, and it just like, ugh. Well, see that I I feel like instead of saying like when's it time to give it up, like as far as fandom goes, because like I'm a fervent. Uh, and both of us are the same. Like we will read certain characters, we will pick up new runs and everything like that. But when something like that happens, like when when like Jeff Loeb took over Wolverine or when John Byrne took over Justice League, um, you have to look to yourself and be like, why am I reading this? Why am I reading this? Like I love these characters, but why? Like do I really need to see well, yeah. this happening to them? Well, you know? we had we had customers who were you know dedicated, mm-hmm. who were the Superman guy, the yeah. Batman guy. You know, they bought every Superman Batman book that was out there because it was complete. Uh, we had plenty of dudes who were, who who mostly were younger, who were probably mm-hmm. like closer to our, our age, if not a little right. bit older, a little bit younger, who had like complete runs of X Men, and they're just buying mm-hmm. X Men to continue, keep the run, keep the run yeah. going. And and I, I I hate the idea of the keep the run thing as your mentality for sticking along with the book. If right. your enjoyment's gone, 
it's time for you to move on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that same thing goes for the for being a creator. If you're a terrible mm-hmm. if you're Frank Miller and you're and you you basically hate your medium and you have nothing good to say about mm-hmm. the medium or give back to the community of this, because it really is like a bunch of really great talented people who are willing to work together. Yeah. That you will like Frank Miller, yes, he writes and draws his stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not his only inker, he's not his only colorist, yada yada yada. You know, these are people you have to work with. Yeah. And he's a dude who bad mouths a lot of mm-hmm. people. Alan Moore bad, bad, bad mouths a lot of fucking people. But it's just like, if you're not engaging in that, because at the end of the day, it's just like working in a newspaper. Right. You're still going to have to deal with the other writers in the same, mm-hmm. you know, in the bullpen. Yeah. And still, you know, even if it's from a thousand miles away, we, you know, all you have to do is telecommute over Skype and still right. communicate with them. You know, half the people that, like, Grant Morrison and, like, Warren Ellis, like, Grant Morrison on half the stuff that he worked in, mm. he, uh, for the last like four or five years, he's never met like face to face. Oh yeah, yeah. And they still unless be- it's unless it's a UK artist. Exactly, yeah. 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 And even some of them, there was there was someone who I was really surprised that he worked with often that he said that he's never met yeah. personally, and he was just just like you know whatever man, he just has that great ability to convey yeah. his, his story to me. Well, it's it that, that that comes with detailed um story writing. The the other thing, I mean like. Uh, like the way I view comic books as a whole is the fact that like, you know, that old saying where, um, you know, you can't pick your family, yeah. you know, like you can't, you cannot choose if you can choose the girl you date, you can choose who you, who's going to be your friends, but you cannot pick your family. And that's how comic books are. You cannot pick a creative team. You can sit and bitch and moan, which I feel like a lot of fans get into the habit of bitching and moaning. But like, listen, if you don't want to read the book, don't read the, If you don't want to read Flash because read Jeff Flash. Johns left, don't read Flash. read Flash. You know, like don't complain about it. And you wish, wish it gets better, but don't sit there and like completely bemoan every single thing that comes out, you know? And I feel like there's, there's a big majority of comic book fans, which are, um, and I think this is like a two part thing. Um, I feel the beauty of comic book fandom right now is the fact that so many kids are getting into it and so many young adults are getting into it. Even like a lot of people our age and like in their twenties are getting into comics and they have not. Um, crack that surface of meeting like the real that comic book dude who just buys everything and hates everything because that guy's there, you know. And I've met like the majority of comic book fans I've met know their stuff. Like we know our stuff, but there's dudes out there that know more and just hate everything. Everything, you know. Well, I mean, it's yeah, and it's just they come to bitch. Mm. It's like really they show up to bitch and moan. Like why? And that's what the forum is there for. Like. Yeah. Like uh, I think it was Boo Baker who said like the worst thing you can possibly do is is read, not the review of your comic but the forum post like the oh, response because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's just like vile shit. People just mm-hmm. want to be heard. People yeah. just want to get their stupid opinion out there. Mm-hmm. You know, not saying everyone has a stupid opinion, but most of the time it is nothing that's been really beneficial to the critique of this quality of the story of the art. Absolutely. Um, I had a point about one of our customers. Um, try not to name names. No, no, no. I'm trying not <laughs> to. It's uh no, because I mean, like we've had our Superman guys and Batman guys, and like we've had know. our guys who just buy check comics and check statues. Yeah, and that crosses over into another line where like is 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 is, is sacrifice is is not getting your kid a winter coat worth it to get like this new bust nope. that's coming out? No, nope. not at all. Nope. And that's that's the kind of like and the guys who are watching now who work in stores and know like the the psychosis that goes along with it, you'll know exactly what we mean because like, you know, we've worked at the store for God knows how many years together and we've seen dudes who just like come in and they're like, well, we'll say to you like, you know what? My wife says we need a new like dishwasher. I'm going to buy the Savage Dragon statue instead. Yeah. And there's been plenty of guys who do on the low. It's like yeah. real secret. Just mm-hmm. like, yeah, I got these thousand comics I got to buy. Yeah. I got to buy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you- buy a Dark Knight statue. Did you think of your point yet? What did you think you were pointing? No. <laughs> um, but the 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 I feel like the current trend now is, um, what I what I enjoy is the fact that you have a lot of young readers coming on and they're buying books. You know, people are buying books now again. But I feel like when we were kids, um, good books were put into our hands. Yeah, you know, and I think that is a little non-existent right now, especially with the internet. Because, you know what? There's nothing like word of mouth, especially if it's from a trusted source. You know, like if it's somebody like you or somebody who's an avid comic reader, and they said, "Hey, you know what? I know you. I know you. I know your personality. Check this out. Check out Preacher. Check out Sandman. Check out whatever. It's good stuff." You know. Whereas, 
if you go on the internet and you say, Hey, I want to read, um, red Robin and the outlaws, you know, and oh, is, you'll, you'll be blind. Boy, I feel like mistake. fandom fandom now is blinded by the new and not absorbing the, what could be, or the, the fantasticness that was, you know, we always meet comic book fans that are like, Hey, or like pass pe- people passing, you know, we'll go out, we'll, go somewhere and there'll be like a group of people who are like oh I read comics too like what do you read I read I read like this and this yeah you know that's it that's it that's all they, they really want to talk about people should read more comics but you know it's it's up to I feel like it's up to the older comic book fans and like the guys who are really passionate about the genre to put the new books into people's hands that are that are good books yeah and you know what I think I think there's a great opportunity for word of mouth because of the internet you know mm-hmm. because of you know just saying hey this book is awesome you know kind of plugging it away and everything um you know that's how we're seeing a lot more attention towards what's going on image right now and like a lot of these books that Uh you know coming out of nowhere and like doing well but also it's image has the biggest speculative market out there Mm -hmm. because they really like every book that comes out is the possibility of selling out and possibly being sold an incentive they're all looking for that walking dead they're all looking for something that is mm-hmm. going to be that monumental for success mm-hmm. that they can market and then eventually get a great return on it. Yep. So it, and it's the proper, it's the, that's the right way to doing speculation. And, you know, hell, if it's going to happen dur- during with, you know, with anybody, mm-hmm. uh, why not image? You know, that's a great place to speculate, right. you know, pump more money into them, buy 10 copies of, mm-hmm. of, uh, you know, uh, mind the gap or whatever is, is you know, this mind the gap was good. I picked it up. I haven't <laughs> My gap was fantastic. I like Matt Kent. Um, yeah, you're you're exactly right. Like image, image has done like talking a little bit about Image Comics. Image has done a bang up job in the past like two or three years with just really pumping out number ones and like really good solid issues. Mm-hmm. Um, image in the past year has had um so many books that I cannot recommend enough. Like you have uh, Mind the Gap, you have Saga, you have Manhattan Projects, you have Fatal, you have these dynamic books that are just coming out and they should be in Chew in Chew. Um, they should be in kids' hands. They should be in people's hands right now. Um, Super Dinosaur. Super Dinosaur is awesome. And you like, I feel like um, fandom now is kind of like you're scratching the surface a little bit. You know? yeah. um, the Avengers movies, the Marvel movies will make you kind of get into comics, but I don't feel like there's a there's an outlet for people to say, where do I start? Because like you said, you go into the forums and all it is is people bitching and moaning. There's no positive influence on comic books. you know? Yeah, totally. And do you think that's because it's the majority of comic book fans are just like this is our thing, like don't come near it. I think it's ins- I think there is a a bit of mm-hmm. you know a boys club type thing going on, uh, where I think that goes with any type of uh, of medium where you have a very tight fandom mm-hmm. where it's very much like we were here first type of thing, um, and they just don't really want those new bloods. It's this the same thing is going on with. Uh, with the way like Game of Thrones are like, you know, I follow a lot of like the Game of Thrones, like Reddit threads right. and going back and forth. So there's a big divide between like the mm-hmm. readers and the non readers. Like the readers shit all over the non readers because they're like, you know, like, oh, we're glad you're here watching a TV show, but like, you know, we Where read were the, you? Yeah, yeah, we read the books, you know, like nah. whatever. I mean, so there's there's always gonna be that kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. It's very territorial and it's very mm-hmm. much like, you know, who put their flag on the ground first? Mm. whatever but like dude at this point with the way the industry is going we need to embrace whatever new readers we have yeah if they love uh some what some garbage give me some garbage give me a garbage book hawk and dove if they love hawk and dove like you know let them love hawk and dove mm-hmm. you know they're putting money into a brick and mortar store or a digital marketplace mm-hmm. um make it happen it's good for the industry regardless of yeah. what it is so like embrace them, you know, like don't don't let this let the right one away from people. And also embrace embrace the fact embrace the the just the sheer idea of storytelling, um, which is like another thing that I run across is um, you like you see a movie like exam, uh, Avengers is a perfect example. <clears throat> You'll hear people go, "Well, they should have done this. Why didn't they do this? This is based on this, and this is based on that." Sit, please, just like if you're a fan, like open your eyes, open your ears. Sit there and say this is a new story, you know. Like you want, and you don't want the same old 
this stuff over and over again. You the want new stuff. The Walking Dead. You want a different take on stuff that you like, you know? Yeah. And that's what I don't get about, like, like the Game of Thrones stuff and even, like, the Lord of the Rings stuff or, like, anything that went from, from book to completely commercial movie, like any property like that, uh, James Bond's a good example too because yeah. like I don't hear any James Bond fan saying like, well, in the book, in Ian Fleming's book, he was ugly and he had a scar. Why isn't this happening? You know, you don't have that fervor when it comes to that, but you have fervor with Game of Thrones. You have fervor mm. with Lord of the Rings and it's just, I, I feel like the non-acceptance has to go out the window and the embracing of people reading new stuff, like you said, has to come in the window. Yeah, it does. <laughs> come into the window. It's going to be a song. So, um, but if you said if you if new fans were watching right now, like kids who just picked up comics, like not not kids, kids, but like, you know, young adults, put two books in their hand right now that are on the shelf right now, what would you tell them? Ultimate Spider Man. Okay. Uh and I would say Batman Incorporated, but not anymore. Um Spidey. Spidey. Ultimate Spidey and no. Spidey. Two Spider Man books. No, I, I can't would, do that. I'd throw Daredevil. Do uh, the Daredevil run. No. No? Why not? Not for a kid? Well, I'm saying like a young adult. Like, like you know, like when we started reading uh, Preacher when we were like 15. From number one or just right now? Right after the show. From anything within, within the past year that has come out and say, like, hey, you can still get these. They're available. Ooh. Track them down. Ultimate Spidey is good. I, I completely Ultimate agree. Spider-Man Ultimate Spidey is, is number yeah, one. I think that's, that goes without saying. It's just an easily accessible book. And that and, crosses boundaries too. Like you, anybody, yeah. you can put that in anybody's hand and they'll enjoy it. They'll enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, shit. I would say. I was just saying the other day. Uh, if it's anybody, I would love for them to get into X Force. X Force, fantastic. I think it's. I think it crosses a lot of boundaries. Mm-hmm. I think it's a really genre defined book. Mm-hmm. It's all over the place. It's a beautiful book to look at. Mm-hmm. Um, snicked bub. Yeah. Uh, you get uh, like an all star team of murderers. Mm. It's just a just damn good book. I'll throw a, I'll throw Flash in there. Yeah, fl- yeah. I was mm. thinking about Flash too. Flash mm. is a really easy book to jump in. Yeah. But uh, what, what are you? What's the other one? Flash, I would Flash, Daredevil, because it's just like it's great storytelling, you know, and the mm. art's fantastic. Mm. Yeah, you, know, you like comic book. When you're a kid, like I feel like when when you're a kid and you read comics, you're like, oh, this is great. But when you're older and you read the same comics, you're like, this is fantastic. And you but can kind of separate know. stuff. See, I don't you know. know if, I don't know if the uh, the the younger adult, like the not even the, a young adult, but like a kid, mm. that would appreciate the uh, the the skill of Daredevil. Okay, like the style of Daredevil. Like I know, like. 20 years ago, I would have not appreciated Daredevil's mm-hmm. Marcus Martin art. I would have wanted to see more things with the muscles. You wanted, like, you want Liefeld and yeah. Stephen Platt. <laughs> you had Stephen Platt and Jim Lee. Yeah, all those guys. Showing up. And yeah, that's the thing. Them. Do you think, that's a, good, that's, a good, that's a good question. Do you think there are, are dudes now who uh, kids are gravitate towards? Because when we were kids, it was McFarlane, 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 Jim Lee, Jim Lee. And then like a bunch of those dudes, the you know. Uh, so I, I was never like when I was a kid. It was like it was like McFarlane, Spidey, and Sam Keith. Uh, Sam Keith, fantastic. He was, but he was like the weird guy. He mm-hmm. was like the Marcus Martin, you know. Um, who do you think? Like nowadays, I like uh, I like the Valentino. Yeah, I was a huge Valentino. Were you fan. Really, I love Guardians of the Galaxy and I love Shadowhawk. Uh, never, never. A, I love Shadowhawk too. Not a big. Uh, I'm sorry, not Shadowhawk. Uh, I was thinking of Darkhawk. Which we will we will have a dark hawk episode one yeah, day. Yeah, we will. Um, but I'm saying like nowadays, like what kind of art do you think kids would gravitate to? Do you think it's still the muscle bound, like mm. weird anatomy stuff, or has I think it's it like Ed McGinnis. I think it's like uh, that's a good one. I you know I th- kids love Ed McGinnis. Yeah. Like that's like superhero stuff. Mm-hmm. They look like action figures. Those are like the action figures they're buying. Yeah. Um, I think it's like Ed McGinnis. Uh, I think what's his name would do very well. The guy who that's drawing uh, Wolverine the X Men that looks like Art Adams. Oh, like, Bacallo. Uh, oh, not Bacallo. No, no, the other one. Yeah. The yeah. other, the other switching. Oh, I forget that dude. Um, he's a, he's a new guy. That's like his yeah. new gig. Um, I, I think guys like that who have that crazy dynamic, mm-hmm. you know, like that really like eye popping type of stuff. I don't think DC has anyone can really pull no. to mind. I will throw Capullo. Capullo, yeah. yeah. I think Capullo because he has like. He has found that beautiful blend between darkness and like really mm-hmm. like beautiful looking art. He's nineties uh, with anatomy. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 come a song. I'm, I'm very proud of him as an yeah. artist, uh, and I think he would be visually gratifying. You know, he's on the Batman book. You mm-hmm. know, you could throw that book into someone's hands, and, and that kid would love it. Um, I would throw uh, Ryan Otley in there. 
Yeah. I think, I, like, yeah, I, I think if you were a kid, you would absolutely. gravitate towards Ollie and yeah. Invincible. And Invincible, that, that's another book, too. Like, I feel like doesn't get enough airplay is, um, you know, like, if you're new to the genre, pick up Invincible. You know, Walking Dead's great, but Invincible is, is the one of the ultimate superhero stories you'll ever read, you know? And I would say that, and I feel like I say that on the tail end of saying the uh, that James Robinson just JSA run. You know, because that is like superhero. Yeah, dude. You know, like from like anything from J- like that James Robinson JSA run until the end of that that it's whole series stuff. just was like they did a really good job of taking extra special care with those characters. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. pick all that stuff up. All right, everybody, we have a little bit of time left. We're gonna jump into the books of the week. Uh, thank you for bearing with us. Uh, we got three this week, right? We do. This is when you say yes and not fall asleep. Can we get a shot of John now? <laughs> no. Say, oh, overdo- no. Did you overdose on Jolly Ranchers today? Yes. <laughs> All right. Captain America number 12. Dope book on so many different mm. reasons. And he comes alive. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let me tell you about mm. this book. Okay, go. Captain America. I, I'll be. I'm, I'm a huge Captain America fan. I have I've honestly no. felt that the... Since its relaunch with number one, it has been floundering a bit. Mm. It's been a good book. It's still been a solid book. But I miss the excitement mm. of, like, you know. The uh, turn. The surprise of the turn. Yeah. Mm. You know, like, you know, when, when like, Winter Soldier's running around yeah. and there's a lot of stuff going on. And then they introduce, you know, this guy, Bravo, Angel mm. Bravo, who's a really cool character. Um, he's like the equal to Captain. He's like the anti Captain America at this I, point. See, I feel like the first few issues harken back to like the more fun Captain America. Yeah, and then it lost its way like right after. That. It did the Mad Bomb thing, you yeah. know, and it kind of flounders, I, you know. And I'm always, I'm never a fan of a Falcon story. As mm. much as a Captain America fan as I am, I never am crazy about Falcon. Would you be happy if he died? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I thought he was gonna die uh, numerous times. Um, it's, I I can, care, I can care less about yeah. it. I really, I really. Care. Okay. So I think there's other people that can fill his role. You have Bucky in the back nowadays, right? Yeah. Falcon. Um but in this they excuse me. Is that important? I know. Uh excuse me. Is that important? <laughs> uh the whole storyline this storyline, uh Patrick Zerk is, is drawing along with our uh, Baker's uh words. Uh, this is about a gentleman by the name of Scourge of the Underworld. Mm-hmm. And who, Scourge is a recurring cap villain. Yes. Oh. I wish they went back to the original old school skinny white costume with the hat. Do you uh, like, did you like the, um, the rollerblades? Rollerblades? Didn't he have, uh, didn't he have like skates at one point? No. No. Nah. Yeah. He had like, there was, there was a point when, uh, Nomad was him and he had like a conglomeration of. If he had a yeah, he had the like, gas mask kind of thing. No, it was a it was a horned skull mask. Mm-hmm. It was in Thunderbolts, and he had like Stiltman and all types of crap. So he could have uh-huh. he could very well have rollerblades. But uh, the original costume was like uh, kind of like just all white hat. Yeah, you know, white skull. You know, and he had like a Tommy gun. It just always said justice is served. Uh, when they reintroduced him in Thunderbolts, um, they who was he? He was nuke underneath right. it, and they made him look like a much better. He looks basically a character from like, mm-hmm. modern, like you know, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Yeah. Um. So there's a new scourge running around killing supervillains, and Cap is trying to protect uh Viper, this uh, Serpent Squad member who's mm-hmm. under witness uh, witness uh, relocation program. Right. So in this issue, not only do they reveal that the guy pulling his strings is Gyrick. Which is one of my favorite. That's characters. pretty nuts because it's uh you know from the X Men um franchise also. Yeah, well yeah he's Captain he's always been Captain yeah. America too. He's more Captain America than X Men. Um, and he's also being brainwashed. Mm-hmm. But the big reveal is ooh, something I talk about almost every single week is that Scourge is actually D Man Dennis Dunphy. Yeah, how insane was that reveal? I was I didn't even see it coming. You were floored. I was hoping. Uh-huh. I like at the back of my mind, I was hoping that they could be utilizing D Man, and mm. sure enough, D Man's back. Well, we've mentioned D Man every so often on the show oh. about like he was like the loser. He's kind of like the guy that nobody wants. Um, and he showed up in something recently too. I think he was on. Um, was he, was he like rejected for the Avengers? Like those those one shots or something? Yeah, like that? he was. Uh, he's a homeless guy. Yeah, and now like he's scourge, and he's a brainwashed scourge too. Yeah. Well, he's a well. Gyrick is is brainwashed. Right, right. right. Uh, Dunphy is just a mess because mm. he's a he's a paranoid schizophrenic. 
Uh, but he, it's, it's just awesome. Dunphy, uh, D-Man was basically a pro wrestler who got juiced up on like Super Soldier Serum <laughs> and wore a collaboration of like Wolverine's mask and Daredevil's original costume. The yellow, yeah. Yeah. And just had a big D on his chest. And then eventually uh, they fought and he was encased in ice, mm. uh, just like Captain America. He eventually thawed out and they found him wandering the streets of New York and became King of Bum Alley. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. A great book. Great issue. Great issue. I feel like this is a standalone, a good standalone issue too. It's a good place to pick Very up a book. Um, but like, I feel, you know, like if you're a new fan, like you're going to need some backstory on Gyrick because Gyrick is a piece of crap. Um, I always thought he was. I remember yeah. like reading the Gyrick stuff when I was a kid, just like. He's scum. Oh, he's such a scum. He's, he's like the epitome of like good Marvel scum. Mm, yeah. He's government the, people. The bureaucratic Marvel. Yep. A uh, piece of crap, and it, like I feel like the glasses and the red hair too, just like Dude. yeah, you, you immediately hated him. It was Blue Streak who I was thinking of, not Scourge. Was Blue Streak had the gas mask and the skates. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I just looked it up. Uh, <laughs> I remember that I was like one of the first issues of Cap I picked up, Cap three eighteen. Um, Blue Streak. It was Blue, Blue Streak. Streak. Blue Streak breaks out, and it's and the reason I bought it is be, not because of the cool cover with Blue Streak on the cover, but Cap had, it was on the motorcycle. Uh, with the helmet, and I'm like, oh, Cap's got a motorcycle. What's going on here? I was never crazy about the blue, the motorcycle of Cap. Why not? I don't know. I always like. I kind of identify him with the motorcycle. That's why I liked him at at the end of Avengers. I was like, <laughs> no, it's you cool. Get him, dude. It's, it's cool. I just, I just think that it was a really terrible error for uh, ooh, Blue Streak. Uh, <laughs> I I always felt mm-hmm. like it was a. Uh, it represents a bad error of, of Cap. You gotta give him the motorcycle though. Whatever. Yeah, that's gonna work out, man. Remember when um uh old man Logan when they incorporated the yeah, no, no, they, I, this, this, this is stuff, a lot, man. This this is a lot. regular motorcycle. A lot of good stuff. All right, Flash number nine also came out this week. Um which I feel like is a is a nod to uh Flash fans because the like you touch upon like the Flash's Rogues Gallery, and he is one of the ultimate rogues galleries mm. in all of comics. Uh, you kind of get a little hint of it through the first few issues, and you know you kind of see guys that you're familiar with. But um, the fact that they just jumped into this Grodd thing, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, and they I did, know you're a big Grodd guy, and they did a good job of. Uh, I'm more of an ultra human guy. Yeah. Um, mm. I like what they did with like Gorilla City. Mm. I like what they did. How he, you know, he basically killed his father and ate his mm. brain, become more powerful. And it's uh, a good little throwaway about how Flash just appeared. Yeah. yeah. And it's also cool how they're tying in the Flash mythos to Gorilla City. Yep. How he, it's like it's he's meant to be coming to this like this this area where Gorilla's supposedly talking. Exactly. Like he's, he's, <laughs> he's the he's the prophesized, like he's the light that's yeah. prophesized. And he's amnesiac for uh-huh. like half the issue too. I have no idea. What I don't think they should. You know what? Honestly, like I love the issue. I don't think they should have gone the amnesia. I have route. no idea because it wrapped up so quick. Where he was like, "I'm oh, I remember I'm from the Flash," and gorilla. You have a crazy gorilla just chasing around the Flash the entire issue, and um, uh, they tease the wizard, the weather wizard. Yep. He's was where he's watching over the side. It's just a really fantastic issue, and it's like it's a great team, you know. Like you have Francis Manipal and Brian Bussolato, just like bringing you some like really cool lighthearted Flash stuff. Good you know? stuff. Which I like. I want. Uh, I enjoy lighthearted Flash and um, extremely dark Flash. Ex- yeah, when it goes from really lighthearted to Flash, is like yo, like shit's about to hit the fan right now. Like we gotta do stuff, and that's when Zoom shows up and starts killing people, or like girls start eating people's faces off. You know, because he has the is one character that has propensity to be completely light and completely dark. Mm. Um, at the same time, a lot of characters do. Spider Man's a good example, also. Mm. And I also want to touch on the fact that I am not a big fan of this Spider Man story arc. Well, I am. Are you? I'm not a big fan. Mm. I think Spidey Island was better. Yeah. Um, but I am such a sucker for Sinister Six. Uh huh. That and you, this issue get a Mysterio Spidey team up, which is incredible. And it's really cool. Um, that was the saving grace of this issue. I think what's bothering you is the fact that he's not in Spidey the Spidey suit. No, you know thing. what? Don't care. Yeah, I don't care. I I really like the armor and everything, but it's just like I feel like it's it's spread out too thin. Like it's eh, like I don't know what it's, it's like, short yeah. though. It's only six issues. It was yeah. done. I and I also I, I'm also a little disappointed by the fact that like this issue started by saying like it has like a lot of weight to it and I'm sure it will at the end but it just doesn't feel that way it just feels well, like it's fake well yeah but like it feels like yeah. it's like Spidey's spinning his wheels a little bit with the whole like, none, 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 none of it feels heavy yeah the the, the str- mm-hmm. it, whatever threat level they have it it's doesn't it's not successful mm-hmm. like you know that that the post is not going to blow up the world right um it's just what's going to happen next type of thing um, you get some cool stuff with like the Spidey finding the new Sensor Six, which is basically mm-hmm. Avengers. Yeah, um, which is kind of cool. It's kind of cool. 
I got a question for you about Spidey. Mm. What did you like better, the Spidey Island story or that incredible Craven family story that happened? Craven last family day? story was the best. So good. Yeah, that was that was mm-hmm. uh, such a surprise. Um, if you can find it in trade, mm-hmm. the return of Craven, it is rocking. Because it was the whole family getting together and trying to kill Spidey, and that's when he gets really pushed to the limit. Yeah, which is always a fun story, yeah. and they do it in a very well, good way. Um, mm-hmm. and it's a great return to the character. Yeah. It's a really, really solid, awesome issue. Mm-hmm. I uh, our friend Bobby, who we always like try and hand comics off to, off to, and he's he's a big fan, but he only has so much time to read. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't read Spidey for years, and I threw him just that arc, and he mm-hmm. fell in love with it. So yeah. like that was so far, that's been like one of my favorite Spidey arcs. It's that the, good. Yeah, it's no. that it's that that good. Uh, we got one more book for you, folks. It's uh, Batman Incorporated, number one. Another another week, another Batman book makes it into the books of the week. Granted, oh, yes. it was the uh, it was May. Uh, I don't know. If you, <laughs> I don't know if you, uh, people out there know this, but May is generally a five week comic book month. Um, mm. You always get that extra kind of like week of non books that come out. You know, mm. so we had like a lot of good um, hits this week. You know, like Thor and you know the, the, the couple of books we mentioned. That Fantastic Four book, which was okay. Nothing, you know, nothing they, crazy. They save uh, they they that that kind of pissed me off too. If I can touch on that a little bit. Yeah. Um, there's your Fantastic Four. It takes place in William Lumpkin's brain, and they exterminate his brain cancer. I feel like it's a great story. It's a nice heartwarming story. But if they could have done this the entire time for anybody, anybody, why not do this for anybody and everybody who has a yeah. lump in their head? Yeah. Anyway, uh, Batman I, Incorporated. I, I, I agree. I agree. Because agree, right? basically, they they cure cancer. Yeah, they cure cancer, and like he's fine now. And why can't they do that with everybody? You can go into the universe and, and, and kiss Galactus on the lips, but you can't cure cancer. Nope. It's only in, a, only in a newsman. Nope. Uh, a mailman. Mailman. And a newsman. Uh, Batman Incorporated number one came out this week in bloodiest, the eye of the Leviathan. Bloodiest comic I've read in a long time. Grant Morrison, Chris Burnham. Your take. Uh, the entire thing is basically a chase scene after mm-hmm. a man wearing a goat, a goat mask. Between Batman and Robin, uh-huh. uh, leads him to a slaughterhouse with a bunch of people wearing cow masks, mm-hmm. um, and they're showing slaughter by slaughter of slaughter of basically soon, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also this great panel. Mm-hmm. I will go back to that one second. I'll, I'll lead into it uh, of cows getting murdered, mm-hmm. like just like them, like a, a cow being put through the the uh, the wall, mm-hmm. their head poking out, being all drugged up, and shunk. Yep. So you hear that sound effect over and over again. And like uh Chris Burnham is a great, you know, Frank Quietly impersonator. Um And he brings something else to the table too. Right? Yeah, but there's like there's certain there's a certain quality mm-hmm. to the two of them. That very fleshy look to everything. Yeah. And very, very animated. But uh it's great because they have this one panel. You can cue it up now, Andrew, again if you can. Uh of they rescue one cow and uh Robin declares that he'll be vegetarian from now on. And he is uh, adopting this as bat cow. And there was a bat cow. And yeah, but that's right there. Yeah. No, I mean there was a bat cow at one point. Yeah. In regular continuity. And he also has like the bat, you know, mm-hmm. symbol across his face. Yep. I thought that was sweet. I thought the thing that a lot of people forget is that there was a cadre of bat and super animals. Yes. You had Ace the Bat Hound, you had the cow, and there was a couple more. Some more. I think it was like a little rat or something. There was uh <laughs> it, it was also great the fact that they actually it being a Morrison book, they mentioned other books like the fact that Robin killed uh, nobody. Right. Um somebody I spook who I have no idea who it is. And they're still touching on the League of Assassins thing, which I feel like is gonna be something kind of really major. Yeah. Because it keeps getting mentioned. Well they, they again, Grant Morrison did a great job of introducing mm-hmm. a table full of weirdos. Uh I saw like an invisible man, an invisible woman yep. sitting at a table. Um Leviathan looks crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm wondering who this uh, Arab Batman that is working with them is going to mm-hmm. turn out to be. Well, I'm like when when they go into the sex shop, I'm talking about that. That was a cool little thing where like it's you know it's the um, it's a society. That's what you're talking about, right? The uh, where they're eating when they kill on because I guess we eat and we do that. We, the beginning of the book. Oh no 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 no! I'm sorry. The Leviathan rises. Yeah yeah like that right. that part. I'm talking about the uh, the part after that where. Um, What's his name? Uh, the Hood? Yes. So he yes, go, yes, they yes, goes yes, into yes, the yes. sex store and he's it's like, very I'm, dope. Ex- I'm expecting a costume. Yeah. And like he just puts a regular costume on and he meets, you know, like uh, the African Batman and all the all the members of Batman Incorporated and they're meeting in like the un- like in the in the basement of like the sex dungeon That's basically. Yeah. And like, you just see like the giant uh, Joker pennies there too and like a bunch of costumes. And um I was like, who's it? The um, the knight is the head of it. 
Like you left Batman, uh, Batman left him in charge. <laughs> that and that's not the that's night. not the night, right? Oh, I, can't, I, I was trying to think of that guy's mm-hmm. name. He has been replaced like a couple of times, so it's kind of a mystery on who he actually is. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I, it's, it's like it's, it's like uh, it's right. like it's like Batwing or something like mm-hmm. that. It's like something with like wing. Um, I can't. Yeah, for the life of me, remember. Yeah. But you also have um the fact that this is still like you're touching on stuff that's po- uh, pre relaunch, which is great. Mm. And uh, like the paneling is completely beautiful in this issue, and you also have um just this guy who's like uh, who's like a cab driver who takes this job. who was like a hitman, and his you know he was gonna kill Robin. So the whole thing is him uh chasing down Robin so he could feed his family. You know, and it's like his narrative saying like, "Would you hold it against me?" Basically, you know. And the issue ends with him shoot like you don't know if it. You know, what it starts out with a funeral and Bruce Wayne saying, I'm not going to be Batman again. And it ends with him holding like what looks like a dead Robin. Which we know is not going to be happening, but it's a good, it's very, it's yeah. played out very, very well. Yeah. It's a very action packed issue. There's a lot of stuff going on. And the mutants are in it too. And the big mut- fan of mutants. And, yeah. and they speak like the mutants too, mm-hmm. which is amazing. Yeah. You know, the mutants being from Dark Knight Returns, mm-hmm. uh, but big weird. Uh, Mohawk and Cyclops visor wearing yeah. dudes, and I like how the the main guy is like really street British. Yeah, you know, like oh, get him in there. The Billy Boys are gonna come in. Go on, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a really like it's great to see him mm-hmm. on this book because like I don't know what the hell he's doing on Action Comics. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, know what <laughs> else, I don't know what else he's doing. Period. Yeah. It's always great to read Grant Morrison Batman. Good Grant Morrison Batman, and uh. You know, this being the first issue, which is mm. not really the first issue because there has been Batman and Corp before mm. 52. Um, yes, you can jump on. Yes, you should have read Batman mm. IP, yeah. all that stuff. It really will help you with this. But uh, Grant Morrison has described this as a roller coaster through hell. So uh, I believe it. As very as as fun as it seems, um, mm. Grant Morrison can stop in a dime and really make it into uh, a really horrifying book. Well, this is also like this is also like a really like the culmination of entire like this Leviathan. This mm-hmm. is like the big story. This is this is a giant story, and it's also like a really like first issue, man. It's an acid trip of a book, you know. Like you were getting like really cool Batman stuff that you don't expect, and like from a guy who doesn't pull punches with Batman, you expect like this is just like stuff in here, like like the brutality of it, and also like the fact that he gets shot in the face. In this, yeah, Batman gets shot in the yeah, like for right. once, like somebody shot Batman in the face in this in this issue. Yeah, you know, and he's addressing questions of like, what if this happened? I think that's a big thing with Grant Morrison of like the big what if with Batman. Yeah. you know, like how far could you push this guy without actually like disfiguring him or murdering him? And you know? and also we have the mystery along with him being uh, going mm-hmm. to a funeral for uh, for whoever in the beginning of the book. Mm-hmm. He, Bruce Wayne is also getting arrested. Yep. So we don't know where it's going. It's gonna be a nice mystery. Mm-hmm. I, I'm. I I complete when when Morrison is on Batman, that's all I care about. Yeah, like uh, I I love the balance between Scott Snyder and and him, mm-hmm. you know, handling most of the Batman franchise. He's got to get rid of those other two books. Yeah, three books, two other Batman Robin's good. Ah, oh, that's true. Yeah, Batman Robin, Dark Knight, Detective, Dark Knight, Detective. Knight. You're not counting Batwing or Batgirl or uh, Batwing's uh, a good book. Yeah, Batgirl, Batgirl is uh, take it or leave it. Okay, book. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's all right. It's not really adding to the mythos. No. So, yeah. but all right, there you have it. That is our book of the week, Batman Incorporated. Pick it up. It's on the shelves now. Uh, this has been another episode of Behind the Counter. I'm your host, Rich Zambolian. I'm molasses. Move it like molasses.